is Tiff back again. Today I'm going to be uh, working with my beloved uh, Jelly Arts gel printing plate in an eight and a half by eleven. I love my jelly plate. And people at the last art retreat I went to, um, they kind of picked on me because I never clean my jelly plate. And it is well loved, as you can see. Um, and one of the reasons why I don't clean it is I like to get the residual colors that have happened previously. Even after it dries, once you wet put wet paint on it again lots of times it will pull some of those colors up so here I'm using a Patty Tolly Parish uh, stencil this is the diamond uh, I don't think it actually uh, caught it on there it didn't focus on to that but uh, I love her stencils because she uses the jelly plate a lot and so she made her stencils where it would uh, fit perfectly on the eight and a half by eleven. So I really love that it doesn't have a lot of white uh, border to it, and that's pretty cool. So check her uh, stencils out. I will link those below. And then I'm working with deli paper. So if you haven't tried deli paper, uh, it's this is eight and a half by eleven. You can get it in multiple sheets. Um, if you have a deli, a local deli. Uh, near your home that has just plain uh, deli paper that's actually what its purpose is it is it a dry wax paper so there's no wax on it um, but you know different uh, restaurant suppliers also may carry it I got mine on Amazon which if I can find the uh, actual seller that I got it from I will uh, link it below in the description so if you guys uh, want some or need some you can take a look at that now what you'll notice here is that it had gotten dry before so white is always a great color and who can go wrong with neon pink that's my favorite deco arts uh, patio color I guess you use it for patio furniture but it's hot pink and it is beautiful and so here I'm using uh, some very large uh, envelopes for my mail art. I love to have these uh, ready to go. And if you, I don't know what uh, term I would use for my jelly plate technique, but it's kind of a uh, plop and pat. So I don't actually use it to get a complete coverage of square. I prefer it to be very random so you will notice in this video that I will go through and turn adjust those deli papers underneath there we're kind of getting on my nerves so I just had to remove them out of the way um, but you'll see I kind of pat really lightly and move it um, so if the jelly plate is eight and a half by eleven and your paper is larger than that you're gonna have a white border I do not like that don't like it at all so I move and randomly um, move it around so that I have a nice textured background uh, with lots of different uh, dimension in it so if you notice I'll flip it upside down just kind of like the same way I do my art journaling and my envelopes um, I move it around a lot and kind of I'm just looking to see where the coverage is this is my hot glue stencils so if you haven't watched that video I will link it uh, in this video as well if you see an eye on your mobile device at the top corner you should be able to click on that and it'll take you to any linked videos uh, inside uh, YouTube on my channel so but as you can notice, I just kind of pick it up, plop it down, and then move it around. Pick it up, plop it down, move it around. Oh, look at us. We're making up songs as we go along. But that's kind of the way. And every time that I go to a craft weekend or I go to an art retreat, people always ask me how I do my backgrounds. And this is how I do my backgrounds. 
Here I'm going to use uh, like some pearl paints. I believe that is Martha Stewart's pearl paint. Uh, it gives a nice shimmer to it. And all of these, most, excuse me, most of these are just your uh, cheap craft paints that you can get at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Michaels. If you're not in the U.S., wherever you get your craft supplies, this is where you'll be able to get this. Okay, so here I'm using... Um, this is off of fruit, I believe, or potatoes or onions or something, the little mesh that you can get. I save that, and uh, it makes a very nice, like, snake skin. Here I'm using some ledger paper. Excuse me. Um, just to get, and this is a huge piece of paper, so this is about a 12 by 14 piece of paper. That's a guesstimate. Um, and so I just dab it around. It doesn't matter what size. I just dab, plop, rub. And depending on how hard you rub, of course, how much color is going to come on, apply to it. Now this is some Martha Stewart paint as well. I think it's like a tomato orangey color. And then I put hot pink, the only color that there is in the world to me. I love it. Um, and then I'm adding some golden fluid. Um, you can see how transparent it is there in the yellow. I like to use multiple colors. Uh, typically, I use two plus white. Um, and for this one, I'm going to use a Crafter's Workshop flower stencil. I love this stencil. It always does so, so nicely. And so I chose that blue diamond background from earlier. And I'm just adding that layer of... Uh, orangey to it and then as you see I couldn't cover the whole paper because my page is 12 by 12 so I just slide it on the bottom and take a little bit of that orange and apply it there so here I'm going back and this is what I do guys is I just layer 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 until you have it exactly how you want it so if you have a a blue and green background then a very nice pop of orange or red or pink this is a corrugated piece of uh, cardboard that I have cut into a heart and glued to a piece of cardboard um, to create a stamp that you'll see here that I'm going to use and then I thought for a second that I might use um, this pot thing but I forgot that I laid the heart out so I just went ahead and just using the brayer to put some nice corrugated texture with the heart there and for me I like to remember to go off the edges um, of the plate don't allow yourself just to stick within the plate itself but kind of make it appear as if though it goes on and on and on so and here I'm using that gold and yellow this is uh, magenta which if I had rubbed it together and rubbed it together this would have made brown so be aware of the colors that you combine on the jelly plate and here I'm just taking and making some funky swirly just crazy look at marks <laughs> all over it and again I'm using a very large I think it's a 12 by 12 uh, envelope a white one that I do a lot of my mail art and stuff with and you can always just make up a lot of these and then you'll have them sitting beside so when you need to mail something I'm really excited about that one apparently I'm doing a little dance wee 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 um, but that way you can just set it to the side and you can come back whenever you're ready to mail something and you can create a nice mailer for whatever you're sending because I hate mailing something that is in a plain envelope. I do not like it at all. I like to be able to, when you take that package out of your mailbox, I want you to be like, whoa, this is cool man this is a great envelope so and then I'm using the number stencil by Donna Downey 
uh, there and then again I'm just plopping and patting plopping and patting and moving it around and then grabbing another and pulling it and moving it around a little bit and it just to me it just really that makes it easy base for a journal page a ATC whatever you want to do you've got a great foundation and a base there I'm gonna go again with um, some pearl that pearl green Martha Stewart and then I thought about it I said oh this is gonna be very easy to make mud so I kind of did portion of it and then I come back with that magenta on top so it was didn't mix together a whole lot and now I'm taking my handy dandy fabulous fork so make sure if you're using a plastic fork that it doesn't have a very sharp um, points at the ends because you don't want to damage your jelly plate uh, and then I just made some lines with it and I'm going down and plopping and patting and I really liked how that uh, turned out and then I'm adding two on the bottom again like you see and then I'm gonna go back and pick up some of that onto another page doing a little dance with it it's so fun and so free that you never know what's going to come out or uh, what may show up and don't you know you don't have to go out and buy a lot of special supplies just use your brayer whatever craft paints you have and anything at your house you can pick up and make uh, numerous thousands of different prints uh, using what you have at home so going on my motto of the year is use what you have and explore that then I really love how that magenta looked on that one that turned out nice so much fun and like I say the deli paper makes it very easy to collage um, a lot of times I will tear strips of it and put it on so guys I hope if you have a, a jelly plate there's videos out there where you can make your homemade jelly plate um, this one is a stencil that I cut out of apparently a honey Cheerios box and I'm going to use the hot pink because everything's better with a little pink. And I'm going to just use that as a guide. So not even using the entire um, jelly plate, but just a portion of the jelly plate. So you don't have to cover it with color. And then going back and doing a little um, stencil and with my paintbrush and putting that on. And it uh, really turned out nice, as you can see. I like how that looks. So, guys, thank you so much for tuning in today and watching my next video. I'm going to be using one of these uh, jelly plate prints and doing some mail art. So, I hope that you will subscribe and like this. Make sure you comment. I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Love you bunches.